Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Michael Venezia, and I am the head of the Equity Trading Division here at TradeView Markets. Today is Friday, December 5th, 2014. Uh, this is my second webcast, so I thank everybody for joining me. But, uh, before I get up into this week's topics, I'd like to bring up a couple of things. And number one is I'd like to ask everybody, if you haven't done so yet, uh, to please go back and watch my first webcast, which you can watch on the Rhino Report. So basically, what I said is that I emphasize with products and with services, uh, myself, my head, my senior trader as in TradeView are going to bring forward uh, in the near future. And that's, once again, you can see that on the webcast. So the first handful of webcasts I do and articles I write may seem a little bit fundamental, mundane, boring. You might have heard it before. That's fine. Uh, but you know what? The basis for trading are the, are, are the core of the fundamentals. You can never hear them too much. Uh, and I want to get all these terminology down. I want to get everything that, 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 that I want to relate to you. So when it gets time to trading and making money, we're clear on, what, on the vernacular and, and how I speak. So we can put all that aside and, and, and go ahead and execute. So uh, the three topics I'd like to discuss this, this week uh, are written uh, on the Rhino Report. You can read them under the breaking news section or on the educational section. And the three topics in no particular order are as follows. Time frames, execution analytical, uh, relative strength, and active trading versus investing. And that's the topic, active trading versus investing, I'm actually gonna use first because uh, I find it the most comical, and this is the, the real reason is this. Uh, over the years, I've been on a lot of trading desks in my previous firm, and I'm here with my traders now. It's funny how uh, the difference between uh, active invest, the active trading and investing is uh, a winning trade is uh, actively in, actively trading and uh, a losing trade turns out to be an investment, uh, which I can't emphasize how poor of a mindset is because we know in this business, usually losers get worse and when you hold a loser, things compound, especially if you start adding to something and never throw good money at the bad. So, uh, that's kind of clear cut. Uh, investing is it's, an, it's ambiguous. It's your time frame. Some people like to hold uh, over a year to get a tax uh, benefit, uh, whatever it may be. I mean, but uh, that's up to you. I consider it within uh, maybe a day trade or holding overnight, or so to speak. But uh, that'll leave it at that. And once again, you can go over the article in the Rhino Report. Uh, the second topic are time frames, uh, execution, and analytical. Uh, after I give you my basic definition, I'm not alone in thinking this way, it's basically self-explanatory after that. Execution. Uh, for shorter term traders, uh, one minute charts, five minute charts, ten minute charts. Uh, when, you're in a, when, you, when your idea of entering a train is for a short term uh, gain or even a loss, uh, execution or price points, entry points and exit points are tantamount in, in, in primary no matter what. because. If you're going, if you're an analytical trader and go out and all you care about is weekly, uh, monthly, and uh, yearly charts, you're not going to fret over if you pay $115 or $116 for Apple computer. But certainly, if you're in a day trade or some sort of uh, swing trade, if you will, uh, that, that price point is definitely more important. So for executions, I use one-minute charts, basically for block trades, see what happened at a certain particular time. Maybe if a stock moved, it was news-related some sort of news event, so I use that. Five minute charts, predominantly I use for everything. I'm not alone in this, once again, that's not why I do it, but I found it to be the most successful and the most consistent. 10 minute charts are for just a little bit longer a picture. You know, I have a 10 minute chart just to say I have it actually, but I rarely use it, but it is there. Uh, the analytical side, more for investing, uh, daily, weekly, monthly charts. Uh, obviously the daily gives you a shorter term picture, a week it gives a little bit of a where it's been, where it's going maybe, and, and uh, you know, the yearly gives it, or longer than that, gives you a basic DNA of where the stock has been and where it's, where you might think it's going. So once again, you can go back to the article on the Rhino Report, read that about that, and get some basis, and uh, we can go forward with that topic sometime sooner. Uh, the last one, and most important, is probably going to be one of my top three predominant themes going forward, is relative strength. And I use this to identify uh, stock strength or weakness. Uh, once again, I wrote a very good article on the Ryan Report about this, and I look at relative strength uh, in a macro and a micro uh, economic example, if you will. Uh, let's use a micro example. Uh, let's take a look at the U.S. banking sector. Uh, 
the market, you know, if to read the business pages, the market's been in, an, the Dow Industrial is an all-time high, the Nasdaq's fractionally off in it, even if the dot-com bubble, so the market's in what they call a secular bear bull trend. It is what it is. I mean, I, I trade it as well. So you look at the five stocks that I used in the article. We'll take Goldman Sachs, we'll take Morgan Stanley, we'll take Citicorp, we'll take Bank of America, and we'll take Wells Fargo. Okay. Now granted, relative strength is worth the best when you identify strong stocks in a bullish trend. So the banking sector in a bullish trend, the uh, XLF, the energy, the uh, banking sector in a bullish trend in the overall market. So keep that in mind. All these four stocks are up on the day. But you see that Wells Fargo, granted there's no material news and not tremendous amount of volume or price action, just having a, a, a poor day for whatever reason. So Wells Fargo is down in the day. A lot of traders, and I've done this myself way back when, tend to think that if they want to try to pick in the top on the market, they'll short Wells Fargo because it's showing relative weakness. Now, the majority of the time, I, I find out that, that to be a losing trade for the following reasons. Uh, if you're in a, a, a bullish trend in a bullish sector, uh, why not just buy the best of breed of the top two stocks or that acting that way, that acting well that day instead of trying to buy the laggard? Because usually if the market continues its bullish trend, uh, the, not only will the strong bank stocks go up, more likely not only the people that are going to buy weakness because Wells Fargo is in an uptrend, you'll probably get short, short squeezed as well. So, you know, please be wary of that. And once again, the relative strength theme is going to be predominant for not only identifying stocks, but how they, how they, act, in, how they act in a rally, uh, how they don't act in a rally. So we'll leave that in the micro example. But the last one I'll use in the macro example is let's, let's take Apple Computer, for example, uh, and the NASDAQ. Uh, the NASDAQ, as I said before, is near all-time highs in a tremendous uh, bullish range, and that's fine. Uh, Apple Computer is in a leap by its own, so to speak. This may be arguably a couple of other stocks, but Apple's been a darling of fund managers, traders. It's, even, it's a topic of pop culture conversation. It is what it is. Okay, so net Apple on any given day, give or take a, whatever the percentage points, weighs 13% of the NASDAQ. Now, you can say one particular day the NASDAQ is having a weak day. Now keep in mind, one day does not reverse a trend. So the NASDAQ is weak one day, and Apple computer is up, or what do you, what, half a percent of percent. So the trade here is if the NASDAQ is in a bullish trend, instead of trying to buy the laggards, Al, a, Apple is showing relative strength, so heavily weighted in the NASDAQ, buy Apple computer. I find a lot of people think that, that if the NASDAQ is down, uh, all of a sudden, that they, they think they're going to miss the top of it, and they try to short. They try to short the best of breed, which, by the way, is the last to go down in bull, in bull market. So I find that to be uh, a very poor trade as well. Once again, I'm going to go with these specific examples on a daily basis, as not only Apple or the banking sector sector, you know, as a matriculator happens throughout the day, and we'll go over that again in future webcasts. And I'll probably write from future articles uh, about that as well. So please get the relative strength uh, theme uh, in your heads, but. Uh, I'll leave you with those three topics. Please go back to the Ryan Report and watch the first webcast. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, what I had to say today. Uh, we'll have, be having another webcast a week from this Friday. Several topics, two or three are going to come out on the Ryan Report, written ones, which I'm going to go over just like I did this week. So until then, I thank everybody for tuning in. Please trade well and do your homework and have a good night.